Hey everyone, today we're gonna to learn how to use ChatGPT's new feature here, where essentially we can add different file types. And in this specific video you're watching today, we're gonna to learn how to analyze data found within a spreadsheet, Excel sheets, Google sheets, numbers, whatever it may be, GPT can now analyze it and we can get a lot of useful tips and a lot of useful value out of ChatGPT using this new tool. I wanna to clarify as well, this doesn't require any plugins. This is built into ChatGPT+. And I've said this a ton on the channel, but it's going to be one of the cheapest $20 you ever spent as we're going to be able to do a ton of stuff. Also, let me know in the comments down below if there is a specific file type I haven't covered yet that you'd be interested to see if ChatGPT can leverage it now. If you saw our previous video here, we dived into a PDF video where we did a bunch of different stuff and we realized that it can actually analyze images now within a PDF, which is huge. But without further ado, let's go and jump into today. We're going to do three major data sets here. We're going to do a financial data set. We're going to do an employee data set and then we're going to do a sales data set we're going to go ahead and see with different questions whether it can analyze it and these are big data sets so let's go jump into our first one here okay so as you see here we got a big big data set here of a financial record for a pseudo company you know searched around was able to download this one and you know this is pretty big here as you see so there's a ton of information here um, a ton of different rows that are associated with January, February, March, April, currency, year, uh, accounts, R&D expenses, consulting expenses, ton of stuff here. Let's go ahead and see if ChatGPT can compartmentalize this and we can start analyzing this data a lot better than just looking at it. So let's go to jump over back to ChatGPT. We're going to go ahead and click that little plus button here. You're going to add it from your desktop and let's proceed. All right, so let's go ahead and start with a simple question here. We're just going to say, what was the total revenue for the most recent fiscal year? We're going to hit enter here and see what it comes up with. As you see, we got it downloaded here and it's ready to go and start interpreting this spreadsheet. All right. So as you see here, this is our result. This is really cool stuff here. So it looks like at first it approached it with a, you know, pre-contextual bias of how they expected it to be structured here. But as you see here, it went ahead and I didn't have to do anything and it readjusted the way it was going to frame that it was going to approach the sales account in this context. And we were able to get our answer here, which came out to be around, uh, looks like $2 billion or around $3 billion when it comes to that specific question. Really cool stuff. So now that we know that it can handle that large of data sets, I mean, it went ahead and went all the way down here. As you see here, went all the way up to 2023, grabbed all this relevant information here and went ahead and proceeded. Let's go ahead and ask a more complex question here. We say, how was the EBITDA margin trended over the past four quarters here? Let's see if we can do this. I mean, this is like next level stuff when it comes to chat GBT. You wouldn't be able to do this traditionally with the Excel plugins. It shows you how far we're advancing with this technology. Okay, so this is pretty cool here. So when it was trying to discover how to answer that question, it couldn't because in the relevant sample data that I provided, it doesn't have the pertinent data points of tax, interest, and depreciation, which are needed to calculate EBITDA. So it just shows you that this is a pretty comprehensive model here. Let's go ahead and ask another question to analyze the data further. So I'm gonna ask a very specific question here in a very specific row in order to gut check to see if Chad GBT is giving us accurate answers because sometimes it can be confident, but as we know, the answers could be inaccurate. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, what was the total cost of goods for 2023's forecast? Let's see what it comes up with. I'm gonna go ahead and add all of these numbers manually here and see what we get. And when I was going to ask this question, I just discovered something super cool here. Look at this. I didn't even know you could do this. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and remove this real quick. When I just, what I was doing essentially was I was copying this, but look at this. It almost seems like I can actually grab an exact data point like this. So I'm going to do command C, come over here, do command V and look at this. I mean, I mean, the more you learn, we can actually grab exact data points and it shows me in the Excel sheet format. I'm just going to say, calculate uh, total costs because I don't even need a gut check anymore. Um, as you see, I mean, this is a pretty advanced model here. It was able to grab the exact row from that sheet and show me it. Pretty impressive stuff here. All right, so as you see here, this is pretty impressive. I think this is something I never noticed in the past or didn't have the capability to do. But it seems like when you don't use the plugin and you use like the, you know, the models that come with ChatGPT, it almost self corrects itself. As you see here, it goes through the logic. It realizes that there's an issue and then it will go through the logic again. And basically, you know, early on of ChatGPT, there was a thing called auto GBT. It's almost like it's kind of doing that now where it'll keep working through the logic and it doesn't require me to keep proctoring it. And as you see here, we got our final number of 94 million. So knowing this, let's go ahead and jump into our next Excel sheet here which is gonna be employee data. 
So the first question I ask here is going to be a very specific one. Just, you know, how many employees were hired in, you know, 2021, let's just say, and see what it comes up with. I'm going to go ahead and add the Excel sheet here. I'm going to hit enter here. And I'd advise you to typically start new chats uh, if you're dealing with different types of Excel sheets and different types of data as sometimes you get conflicted answers. So let's see if there is a conflicted answer here. If not, we're going to go ahead and keep proceeding with this. Okay, so really solid here. We got our total answer of 86 employees were hired in 2021 here. Let's go to ask another question here. We're gonna say which department has the highest number of employees? As you see here, we have an entire uh, column associated with that. Let's see what it comes out to be. And as you see here, we got our answer of the department with the highest number of employees is the IT department with a total number of 241 employees. Let's go to ask a more complex question here which I think would be pretty cool here. We're gonna say, what is the gender diversity ratio within the company? As you see here, we have a whole column dedicated to gender. Let's go ahead and enter here and see if it comes out with like a percent or how we would structure this data point. And it went ahead and ciphered through all that data and it found the answer of 518 female employees and 482 male employees. And it's even going further here. We see it's approximately uh, the gender diversity calculated as a number of employees divided by the number of employees of male is approximately 1.075. This indicates slightly higher number of females employees. Pretty cool stuff here. I mean, you're able to start analyzing data within columns. So let's go to jump over to our next Excel sheet here, which is going to be a uh, sales data, for, you know, example sales data for food. And we're going to go ahead and ask the simple question to write up to start off where we're going to see the amount of not that one. I'm going to grab the other one real quick here, but it's going to be, what is the total sales volume for each product category here? Let's see. We got a bunch of different product categories. We're going to go ahead and add that Excel sheet and see what it does. So we're going to go ahead and load this here hit enter. And we should get an answer that has something new of, you know, whole wheat, carrot, uh, oatmeal, raisin, and see what it comes up with. And that is super cool. So I provided a different type of file for the purposes of this tutorial. And this file was in the format of an Apple software called Numbers, but it went ahead and converted the file for me for a readable file type that it can handle. I mean, ChatGPT is, is making huge wavelengths here. This is, this is, I can't imagine what it's going to be in a year. If it's doing this now after a year of development in this context, I mean, this is really next level stuff. Okay, so it's not perfect. So it does seem like you are incentivized to upload a correct file type. So in this context, make sure it is an Excel sheet, like a Microsoft Excel sheet, as it was having issues converting this. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert it and then re-upload and ask this question. What's interesting though, is that does give us a glimpse into the future here. I mean, they made an effort, it didn't work, but it's, it, they're trying to make it more user-friendly. They're trying to make it more where you provide certain information or a certain input and ChatGPT really tries to give you the best answer through multiple, uh, you know, run-throughs, through multiple ways of, you know, trying to execute the problem. I mean, we're getting very, very close to, you know, really, really good personal assistant here. Let's go ahead and see the output here. Okay, so as you see here, really good stuff here. Uh, come on over here. So I went ahead and interpreted the quantity and the category and then, you know, made our nice little 5,841 units, 7,464 units, and so on. I'm going to ask a pretty complex question here. If this outputs a graph, this will be absolutely insane but i doubt it will but we're gonna say can you see a trend of sales over the past year for each region come back over here we're looking at regions of east west um just east and west seems to be the two major category points here let's see what it comes up with okay ladies and gentlemen we are reaching i mean if you have been using ChatGPT for a while that's impressive if you're just starting to use ChatGPT, that might not be like that big of a deal to you but i've been using this platform since its launch and stuff like that didn't exist. On top of that, this would have required me to use probably three different types of plugins, each plugin not really optimized to give you the best answer here. We're getting charts being generated now. I mean, this is, we, I genuinely don't know what's gonna happen in a year from now when it comes to this platform. This is really, really next level stuff. I really hope they keep it at 20 bucks a month. And I hope they stick to that and they, and they don't switch the pricing model on that because this is extremely powerful. I'm gonna go ahead and ask a more complex question here and say, is there a seasonal pattern in the sale data? So more analytical, more use your brain rather than give me a number. See what it comes up with here. But I am very impressed by ChatGPT's new feature here to add files, uh, especially go ahead and check out the PDF tutorial. I'll make sure to link it up there as that is a whole nother exploration of what ChatGPT can do now. This one, looking at more Excel and spreadsheets. I mean, if you were super 
knowledgeable in the context of being an accountant or super knowledgeable when it comes to reading data, this is only going to bolster your skills. This isn't going to hinder your skills if you know the exact words to, or sorry, the exact questions to ask, the way to proctor chat GBT in the context of data analysis. You are going to be able to do work a lot faster and get outputs and responses a lot more effectively than if you were to traditionally look at the Excel sheet you know, through traditional means rather than using AI. Okay, so there doesn't seem to be too strong of a correlation here, but as you see, it took all the different data points that was found in that uh, Excel sheet and it, you know, charted out on a graph here with, uh, you know, as you can see here with the different colors. Now I will say we could probably proctor a little bit further, ask for different colors, like make carrots uh, orange, make banana yellow, stuff of this nature. But overall, this is extremely powerful. Uh, I've been doing this for a while now. I've done every single plugin that seemed to be useful in the ChatGPT store and none of the plugins have come up to this level of outputs and effectiveness in the context of reading Excel sheets. On top of that, you could probably use a plugin like Zapier along with this to even start automating tasks and pushing out data past just the chat itself. So super cool here make sure to leave a like if you found value in today's video if you want to see more videos like this i'm gonna leave a playlist at the end here where we are diving into plugins and more recently it looks like we're diving more into chat gbt features but without further ado i'll see you in the next video thanks for tuning in and yes surprise i'm an ai avatar make sure to explore more here at corbin ai where we demystify ai for your personal and business life until next time